Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 12 of the Business as Usual podcast, which I am reliably informed might have its own jingle or theme tune next week. I'm speaking to a, I'm in negotiations with a music teacher as, as, as we speak. Um, thank you for everyone who's already following and subscribing. You can get at us in a number of different ways. So you can subscribe on YouTube, um, which is presumably why most people are watching this, or Spotify. Um, search for Business as Usual podcast and you'll find us on both of those. You can find us on Instagram at Business as Usual underscore because business as usual was taken you can find myself and my co-host mike sawyer on twitter mine is at mr j goodrich mike's is at mr m sawyer we have got three stories that we're going to go through in some detail one's a little bit of an update from last week we've got a four potentially four stories for you to have a look at and then we've got some details about a special sort of half-term edition that we're going to do for the podcast next week so without further ado mike do you want to start us off Right. Starting with an update on the coronavirus impact on business. The number of cases increased by 1,450% to 31,000. And sadly, the death toll has also increased by 200% to 600. So we're going to focus on the uh, growing impact on business. On the business side of things, Chinese CEOs have come out this week warning that the ongoing coronavirus problem is set to devastate Chinese business. They've stated that 60% of the economy is now at a standstill. And many small to medium sized businesses are announcing imminent cash flow problems following the already difficult time they've had with the Trump trade war. Um, so insolvency and bankruptcies loom is what they are saying. But now we also had EU and US companies come out um, and saying they are particularly worried for the future. So Audi is one of them. And they've warned that uh, with production in the um, West will soon also be affected as lead times on supplies are going to increase, such as car parts, electronic components. Um, which we can all find in our iPhones, TVs, cars, et cetera. So they're going out of stock in China, now going out, slowly going out of stock in uh, Europe and the US. So manufacturing will also grind to a halt in uh, the EU and the US, which will obviously um, hit customer satisfaction for companies and also their sales and profits. So whilst there is obviously no doubt that the coronavirus isn't going to wipe out the human race, I'm not trying to worry worry you all. It does look set to possibly devastate small to medium sized businesses and hamper the ability of uh, large businesses even to continue operating uh, at, at their optimal level. Yeah, there's um, I, I saw a statistic that the oil prices are at a, a sort of a low as well. They've dropped massively because you know what you've got to recognise is it's not just China that's affected by this. It's it's any any country or any business in any country that deals with China or relies on China to get a lot of their sales. So any oil company, you know, if if, if China stops demanding oil for a variety of different reasons, then their sort of level of demand drops. And so as a result, they've got this excess supply and they drop the price to try and to try and sell more of it. So it is having a huge impact all over the world. Um, really, really, really impactful. Obviously, it's not quite as important as human life, but you know, for a lot of people who maybe survive the, the coronavirus, there's also that there's then the potential consequence of losing their jobs, which is something that's quite a worry. Yep, definitely. Uh, second story is about Spotify. So we're going to do a bit of more of a deep dive on Spotify next week. We're going to do a big focus on the entertainment industry, which I'll talk about at the end of this podcast. But Spotify are in the news this week in that they're trying to diversify a little bit. So we'll you'll probably be familiar with Spotify as a music streaming business. And that's pretty much it. And they're huge, massive market share, really, really popular. I personally have a Spotify account myself. And they're trying to basically diversify away from just just providing music. And one of the big ways they're doing that is focused on podcasts, which I thought was quite relevant given that this is a business studies podcast. So they, they've recently bought this company called The Ringer. Now, you, unless you're a basketball or American sports fan, you probably haven't heard of The Ringer. But The Ringer is a sort of multimedia network set up by this guy called Bill Simmons, who um, used to work for ESPN, which is a massive sports company in, in America. And what he's basically done is set up this sort of pop culture website. And as part of that, he has put together a sort of catalogue of podcasts. And he's got 30 of them. You know, some of them are key personalities. Some of them are just on different different topics. Um, there's a Star Wars one I've been listening to. They have ones for different sports. They have ones for film reviews and stuff like that. And... Um, They've been bought by Spotify. It's been announced this week, and they, they estimate that the deal has cost Spotify about $250 million. So it's a huge amount of money that they're, they're investing. And the reason they're investing this is because of that podcast um, portfolio. And that's, and I just think it's interesting that, you know, that's clearly a trend that Spotify have identified as something that's going to grow. 
Um, you know, and there's some statistics for, for this. Spotify has huge amounts of subscribers. In fact, they added 28 million subscribers just in 2019, which was higher than Apple, Amazon, and YouTube. Um, but all of these markets are growing, and it's just interesting to see the businesses in these markets, not just sitting and thinking, okay, we're doing really well, actually looking at where the next potential growth is. And so the CEO of um, Spotify is a guy called Daniel Eck. He says that he reckons he's bought the next ESPN, and it's mainly about those podcasts. Interesting. So I haven't looked at this story. How, do you know if they're actually looking to integrate that inside Spotify, or are they keeping it separate and just kind of linked so from Spotify? They are. That's how. That's how I listen to them. So they're already on Spotify, and so oh, okay. all of the all of the podcast network kind of thing. They get put on a, a bunch. Of, I mean, we put ours on YouTube as a video, and we put ours on um, Spotify, and they will do the same. They, there's other websites like Apple. Obviously, Apple Music. They have a bunch of podcasts on there. And another business called Luminary, which is a bit more niche. They've got a lot of podcasts on there. So the main way people listen to these podcasts is through um, through Spotify. And if you've got a Spotify account, you might have noticed that the podcast section has become much bigger. Much, you know, it's almost as big as the as the music section in terms of its prominence on the on the interface. And so that's yeah. So people are listening to it through Spotify, and maybe maybe they'll start looking at how they can. Um, make them exclusive potentially but it's it's about ad revenue and so at the start of the podcast they read adverts and um, have sponsorship and so on and so now i think spotify are going to try and take a little bit more control on that because they can recognize how much profit these because of the ad revenue how much profit these pod, the podcasts especially when they're getting you know millions of views which isn't well not quite the millions yet but, <laughs> um when, when they're getting that many views how much you can actually gain from from ad revenue Oh, definitely. No, I mean, I suppose they're taking control of the supply chain as well, can have more control over what podcasts are done, et cetera, et cetera, if they buy it. No, yeah. very interesting. It's, um, I mean, it's backwards vertical integration, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, expanding their portfolio, adding value to their offer, you know, so many little bits of business theory you can you can add to it. So story number three? So number three, um, I thought we'd go on with the ongoing war with tech companies. So in the UK and the US, there has been um, a groundswell from the from the public that big companies are not paying their fair share. So the UK government in particular has felt this pressure um, to get tech companies to, to which make up the biggest businesses in the world essentially to pay their fair share of tax. So Boris Johnson's Conservative government have announced this week um, a proposal to introduce a two percent sales tax on the likes of Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. So this would obviously reduce the profitability of the big four tech giants, unless they simply increase their prices, of course, um, to cover the cost of the tax, which I guess is entirely possible because they would have somewhat inelastic um, price inelastic demand. So I would imagine they will probably just add the price on. So it'd be interesting to see if Boris Johnson does go ahead with this. But maybe more importantly, um, Stephen Mnuchin, who's Donald Trump's right hand man in America, just this morning stated we can expect China style retaliation with our car companies and financial services to be hit with import tariffs um, if we do try and start a war with their big tech companies. And that would obviously really hurt our, our UK companies' competitiveness. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I mean, they've already done it. They've got form for doing it. When the EU went to war with Google and Apple just last year, uh, the US hit us with 25% tariffs on um, Airbus products uh, that make the airplane products. Um, and also, a bit random, on uh, whiskey, on scotch. Um, so whilst uh, firms can lobby America. governments, so yeah, whilst firms can lobby governments, essentially they, it's kind of out of their control. Um, and sorry, Jack, I didn't quite hear that last, that last question. I was just saying, it's a big, the whiskey market in America is a massive market for whiskey. I remember doing a case study on Jack Daniels, and, we, and it, was, it was mentioned in there, it was one of the biggest export markets. I guess this just goes to show the importance of... Um, you know, when you've got a business that sells products abroad or so exports products or imports products, it's really important that the relationship between those two countries are positive so that the tariffs don't get or tariffs of quotas don't get imposed. Um, I know most year thirty students will be studying globalization this year. And so when you look at trading blocks and tariffs and quotas and protectionism, you know, that's effectively what it is, isn't it? It's protectionism and the um, United States of American government are trying to protect their their businesses, much in the same way that the UK government are trying to protect the interests of ours, and I think there's also, a, you know, you're right to say there's a big, there's a big social push for this, isn't there? Because people are concerned about the ethics of 
of these um, of these big businesses because we're seeing all of this profit and we're seeing how how rich these founders are and how much money they're making and then we're seeing how what small number of the, what, what small, small proportion of that is being paid to our government as tax um, I think people have a, have a right to be a little bit annoyed about that but obviously the consequences it's not just as straightforward as saying right okay well let's make sure that, let's make sure they pay more tax there's net there's consequences to that and that's I guess what we're seeing now. Yeah, I mean, from a personal point of view, I think the American retaliation would be very unjust um, because, like you say, it's an it's an ethical standpoint, isn't it? I mean, we look at the shareholder versus stakeholder kind of debate in ethics, don't we? The Freedman versus Freeman. Should we look after our shareholders or look after society? Um, and a two percent sales tax is not not you know of a great magnitude that's going to hurt these big four companies. So yeah, just... I don't think anyone's denying that shareholders don't like shareholders deserve to have a reward for their for their investment, you know, for their risk taken and for the services that they provide. I think everyone agrees that that's the case. But there's um, do that whilst paying your fair fair rate of tax. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna receive revenue from from British consumers or, or any other country really, then you should pay tax in that area because you know you're taking advantage of the income that has been developed and the the sort of the, the developed economy that's been put in place over hundreds of years by that country. It's only fair you contribute, I think. I think it's fair Definitely. to say. Definitely. But what the US government are then doing, are they're, they're hitting our companies, aren't they, that do pay their fair share. So I'd rather they put a bit more thought into their retaliation and found a company <laughs> of ours that maybe isn't paying their fair yeah. way. Yeah. So it's all very heavy-handed, but interesting. So many of our stories we're looking at lately are around external influences and are outside businesses' control. Um, which is obviously quite interesting and, and hard for businesses to to contend with. Yeah. So, Mike, do you want to go through the, the little stories we've got to, to get students to research in their own time? So, yes, we have four stories that students, um, I'd encourage students to have a look at and to broaden their knowledge further. So, first one, Brexit Britain may soon find itself sinking faster than Venice. It's a nice positive one to start with. Uh, story number two, BP looks to charismatic oil man to lead response to climate crisis story number three linking to um our tech giant story one trillion dollars is just a start why tech giants could double their market valuation and finally springs loaded test driving nike's vaporfly running shoes which are possibly going to be banned in sports that's an interesting one that because um they reckon that it can it's making a huge impact to sort of world-renowned athletes but apparently like if someone like you and me put them on it would make a six percent increase in our running capability that'll improve um, my referee in there yeah yeah get you around the pitch <laughs> i mean i might some of my basketball team maybe could do with some of this all right so that concludes the uh business as usual podcast episode 12 so hopefully you found some of this stuff quite interesting hopefully you'll go away and research some of this yourself um i've mentioned at the start about where you can where you can follow us and subscribe and so on and we'd really appreciate all the support we get one thing I do want to make a special note of is next week's podcast is going to be a little bit different. And it's going to be different in a few ways. It's not going to be one of our standard news ones because we're approaching half term. And so we want to um, give a little bit more, basically. You know, my year 13s are about to do a mock exam the first week back. And it's going to be on paper three. And the paper three of the Edexcel A level is based on the entertainment industry. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a sort of bumper podcast, which is going to have a video attached to it as well. So it'll be especially good for YouTube viewers. Um, big PowerPoint presentation, big video with all of the details that you need about the entertainment market. We're going to go through that in quite a lot of depth. It's going to be much longer than our sort of recent sort of 12 to 15 minute podcasts. So we're also going to post that earlier. We're going to post that on Wednesday. Hopefully that gives teachers a little bit more time to, to spread this around and to make sure that the students are having it set and potentially as a homework task um, to just get to grips with paper three. Now, as I've mentioned, that's based around the pre-release for the Edexcel A level. That being said, all of the businesses that are covered, you know, there are there are businesses and markets that students of business in general, whether that's GCC or A level, should be aware of. So, even though it is the reason we're doing it is for that particular pre-release, it is something that's completely relevant to every business student. So, have a look at that. We're going to post that. I think we're going to record it on Monday. We're going to post it on Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that, and then we will also try and put together some sheets that you can work through over half term so that you still get in your your business as usual fill thank you very much cheers guys